right, let's try this again on a Wednesday. Good morning, everybody. Chris the Old Crow back again to do the Tactical Perspective. 94 Originals versus the G.I. Joe Classified line. What we have right now, what we're expecting down the road versus, or what we can speculate is coming down the road versus what we're missing out of all that collection. Uh, did this whole series starting at 82, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming to an end. That's why I'm wearing all black for the most part, guys. I don't know much black in my wardrobe, but the crew recognizes, you know, this is a, this is an end video for this particular line because this is, uh, the year that Hasbro says we're done with, uh, making these G.I. Joe figures as the line, uh, that, the line that we started back in 82. So, uh... First off, want to welcome all the new subscribers and thanks for everybody who commented on the last few videos. Uh, I'm done talking about that kind of stuff. I'll make reference to things like that jokingly from this point on, but uh, at least I've addressed all that. And uh, this channel moves forward at its random pace <laughs> and its slow but comfortable pace. And I am happy to have the new subscribers here. So welcome all of you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's get on with 94. Don't forget, guys, if you like these videos, go ahead and hit like, uh, or don't. Doesn't stop the flow of videos, but if you want to look, look back at my catalog and you think maybe the, uh, the crow somebody you could listen to more, then go ahead and subscribe and I will, uh, provide you with lots. Anyways, uh, so 1994, guys, uh, we have been watching the kind of... Uh, the, the lines over the last few years start to send a very big message to Hasbro and it's, hey man, we're sitting on pegs. Hey man, you uh, you have too much competition out there. Hey man, maybe, uh, maybe we'll do something else. And uh, so 1994 kind of brought it to a head with a lot of modern tech, I told you how the video game market was starting to really influence uh, everything, including G.I. Joe. Well, 94, we started really de diving deep into the new era, right? Uh, and here we are watching it, watching a video about the start of the end by, through the internet for such things, right? Uh, the internet came in and basically a lot more time was getting leaked, sitting by the computer, uh, downloading and trying to watch little clips or, or looking at, <laughs> you know, what we look at, porn, sure, or trying to chat with family through email and dial up connections and things like that. Cha -ding, cha -ding, cha -ding. So if you can imagine what it was like to deal with any kind of, um, media at that time, it was a slow burn, but it was always going to get faster, right? <laughs> and here we have a guy getting a, a, a failing, like an F on his science fair project because he's telling his teacher right now, listen, in about 20 years, all of this is going to fit in your pocket. And he's like, you're a ludicrous. You didn't even do your homework. But what was the big song in 1994? You know how the crow likes to tie that. All these years to Joe, right? Even this one? Sure. Even this one. The big song in 94 was The Sign by Ace of Bass. Uh, if I remember this correctly, we all got a little sick of this song because they were the new Swedish group that reminded us very much of these guys. Uh, and they were trending a little bit in that era as well, having a resurgence of popularity. And just so you know, that's what they look like today, actually last year. But uh, the number one movie was The Lion King. So how do I tie The Sign and The Lion King to the Joes? Okay, the sign, clearly Hasbro was now seeing the sign. This would be the last year for G.I. Joe to compete against other toys and interests on the market in this era. Uh, they realized that that particular uh, demographic of youth now had their favorites and Joe wasn't in it. And so they needed to sit back, recollect themselves and take a breather. So they read the sign, they read the room and they politely dismissed themselves. Uh, how do you tie the Lion King into it? Because basically what ends up happening is in 94, Kenner had to find a new chosen one. Just like in the Lion King, uh, they, they had to pick one, a, 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 a tribute to their tribe, so to speak. And just like in the scene, scene in the Lion King, they did. And it wasn't G.I. Joe and it wasn't Cobra. They went back to Star Wars because Kenner and uh, Hasbro, pardon me, merged. 
And at that point, like Hasbro bought out Kenner and uh, Hasbro now had control of the Star Wars property. And they decided to throw their eggs into that basket, feeling, I guess, that the market was probably going to be more lucrative for them with the Star Wars line under their name. Um, oops, that's the wrong slide. Under their name. And therefore, it would do... Uh, they would be better served with that. And I kind of see it. G.I. Joe has always been kind of a niche market for boys that were into war toys and a moderate expanse there out, but not much further than that. Whereas in Star Wars had this massive, like lightning in a bottle appeal to a much brighter version of that market. It was all boys and a lot of girls and parents and even senior citizens. Everybody all at once was suddenly buzzing about Star Wars. And that buzz remained as it became kind of the movie standard for uh, the action epic sci-fi, right? So you could see how that one would have a probably more stakes uh, held up in it uh, and more, especially when you knew that there was going to be more done with it in the future as tech got developed and, you know, Lucas Studio said it's not over, right? But Joe was, Joe was declining, so they threw all their eggs in that basket. But that wasn't the end, end of Joe. That was just the end of our Joe as we knew it from the 82 line. They had a good, what, 12, 13 year run. Uh, but they did carry on. And as we know, most of you guys are toy collectors of some form or watching YouTube videos made by toy collectors. But uh, they did do separate little lines throughout uh, the, the gap between uh, 94 and now. These separate little things. And you see the figures and a lot of you probably collect the figures. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, I've seen them on the internet. I'm okay with them, but that's not what this series is about. I'm focusing on those originals. So let's get into that original line. Let's have a look. And like I said, in, uh, in all the other videos, guys, uh, once we got past 90, I'm dumbing it down to one Joe, one Cobra, one vehicle. So these are my three picks that if Hasbro were to try and attempt a classified figure for this line, these were the ones, or vehicle, these are the ones I'd be backing. And I'll show you some reasons why. And leave it at that, or or at least just tell you my reasons why. So we start this off with the Alley Viper, guys. Uh, so, Alley Viper, another variant of that. And there he is there. Very, very much more like the, the first Alley Viper, the Urban Cam almost. Like uh, like they're dialing things back to what, what they started as. And then who do we have after that? I got to get my glasses on, but that is beachhead and yeah that's another another sore point with me especially without the beachhead in my current joe collection and it's a glorious figure i can't wait to find one uh whoa sorry guys i am not a fan of these beachheads at all uh we've been seeing these this mold for it in previous line this is a repaint and there we go with the bright yellow and we'll compare them to the other and you tell me which one you would pick uh but I definitely do not have a sense of connection to the to the brighter one. So we go into this one. This is Dial Tones repaint or reversion, what, three, four at this point. Lost track, who cares? Under the battle core, I've lost track of whose version of what. That's what he came with. And I'm glad they defined that little hose there because Dial Tone had been around for a while. Dial Tone had seen combat. And I was beginning to wonder if maybe Dial Tone had taken a gut injury and this was a colostomy bag. But it's not. It's something else. Uh, we got, what was his name? Flint. Oh, Flint. Yes. Flint gets dragged into Battle Corps. One more variant. And uh it's a desert commando type but he looks like a mix of desert commando duke and judge dread yeah that's about all i'm going to say about that do i see potential in it maybe i just don't know where they would even start to go with the helmet uh but the overall body's not bad and if you uh hate that maybe it makes you think about maybe liking that tiger force one a little bit better i don't know guys Maybe. I gotta sit down for this. Oh, Crow needs a break! Crow needs a break. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, guys. As nice as I try to be to the line in the later years after I lost interest, sometimes it wears you down trying to, trying to find that silver lining on the figure. You're just very difficult, uh, having, having a very difficult time accepting. Uh, so from there, who is that one? 
Oh, Ice Cream Soldier, yeah. So I had to look this one up. I'm going to pull the iPad away in a second here, and I'm going to definitely stop leaning on my table and causing the ball. But there's Ice Cream Soldier. Anybody else go, what the actual F when I say Ice Cream Soldier? That's his, that's his damn name. So I, I'll read you the explanation if you guys weren't uh tracking him the way i wasn't tracking him uh real name or code names ice cream soldier he's a flamethrower commando right look they, they they explain they have to have a diagram to explain to you how he works right uh three two one boof diagram and uh yeah he's a fire operations expert so he's he's up there with char royal and barbecue but listen to this the last thing you would expect from gi joe is the fiercest flamethrower commander commando is for him to be called ice cream soldier however it is a perfect cover because because when cobra hears that joes are sending a guy into battle with a code name like that they don't expect much more than a kid with a chocolate ice cream splattered on his fatigues cobra's perceptions of him change fast when they see ice cream soldier fire up his supercharged flamethrower and blast the flames into their foxhole the munition dumps talk about a firefight whoo Oh, that's terrible. That is one horrible character. I am so sorry, guys. Uh, first, it's really dependent on the idea of all of Cobra being like, Dang, that is one unpredictable soldier. Wish I knew how to deal with the flamethrower. Uh, like, artillery? Flames? Anything? And then it's they have to be completely stupid and <laughs> sit there and go, Ice cream soldier, I bet you this guy. It's some bumbling idiot. Like, that... Ah, oh, I just can't. I can't. No, no, no. Please, no. I'm going to pick this. I should pick this and dare Hasbro to make Ice Cream Soldier. No, I won't. Stop. And if that hurt anyone's feelings, I'm sorry. But you put in the comments why you're defending Ice Cream Soldier as your favorite, Joe. And I will give you all the time in the world to convince me. I promise you. Okay, Lifeline. Lifeline's back in there. And you know what? I don't hate that lifeline. I really don't. Uh, it's better than uh, better than I would expect. And it's a better than some of the other re-envisionings of previous older figures. So I can accept that as a lifeline. Sure. Uh, Major Blood. I'm sorry, but you just... Hasbro, once more, go to the guy who sculpted the first Major Blood you did. Give him one more raise just to be sure. Give them a lot more projects and send them our love. But this, I I can't see this. I can't look at this and say I want this when I know so much that the other Major Blood's out there. And uh, I, guys, I'm just, I'm showing you this. Sorry, was this Major Blood or Metalhead? No, sorry, guys, this was Metalhead. And I get them confused when they get the silver and colors going and they're this hokey. Pardon me, Metalhead we know is coming. There's a Metalhead figure there. Uh, but you notice one thing, and I've talked about this a lot. Have a look, because we're going to talk about this at the end. Broken crotch. Oh, dear. Broken hand. For me, it was always the thumb, but broken hand. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Very, very common things in these lines. But what would we do to complain about it in 94? Uh, we'd dedicate three days to trying to find the, just even who to complain to. But there's the major blood I was going to get on about, right? And so I got a little confused. I'm old. You guys know that. You guys know confusion, dementia, shit, shit, right? Uh, so there's your major blood. Uh, yeah, oh, I think they could do a good variant. But again, like I said, there's no comparison between this and this. Absolutely none. Uh, any other facsimile of this is, is going to be extremely hard to convince me is superior to it. Ah, uh, so who else did we get? We get Night Creeper Leader. Uh, so the Night Creepers we know are coming at some point uh, in the G.I. Joe pop pipeline because we've seen the leaked images of those head sculpts that they're trying out. Uh, that's by no means a commitment to any expectation dates or, or what's going on with the progress. It's just that we know the thoughts there. And so a Night Creeper Leader could make sense, even though he kind of looks, again, like a, like a Spanish wrestling hero. 
Uh, but, you know, there's a, I, I see potential in the character and the color set's simple. The design is simple and it lends room to a lot of creativity on the Hasbro team. So sure, I can see it. There's the Night Creepers there. So picture a swarm of these guys in your list being led by that guy. Okay, there you go. Uh, shipwreck, Navy SEAL. Yeah, that's a workable concept, actually. And that, that impressed me for battle the battle line. Uh, it does dip it does dip shipwreck into uh, torpedoes turf. But with that 60th line Navy Diver, 60th anniversary Navy Diver coming out, you can definitely see some potential there. But that's how he looked like with all his kid on, and I'm not. I, I, I kind of like that. I don't hate on that at all. I love the simplicity of it. Uh, then we got, uh, Snowstorm, and we gotta look at him and all his kit. Uh, no comments there. He kind of reminds me of Mainframe a bit. Uh, we got Stalker, and guys, uh, you know I'm a big, uh, I, I'm a big fan of that Arctic Tundra Stalker, and I, one of my previous videos for the year that came out, I really picked that one hard, and I, uh, I think I doubled down and guaranteed you. That, that soccer repaint would be coming soon for an Arctic Arctic part. Uh, I really am a fan of this. The more I look at it, even though I'm not a big bright colors guy with yellows at all, yellow and black always works when, you, uh, when you're when you looking at maybe a night force or something like that. But that's not a bad variant. As, and I'm saying that not as in I would choose this over anything from the 82 to 87 line. I'm saying, like, if I had to choose out of this line, that's up there. That's definitely up there. Uh, and then we got a Viper. And it's not any just Viper. It's a standard Viper. And it makes me feel like, once again, Hasbro saw the sign and just said, you know what? We've made so many Vipers. Let's just dumb it down to just a simple, simple one Viper. And I can picture this guy showing up at the barbecue going, hey, guys, uh, oh, everybody's leaving. Oh, uh, I just solved all my issues. We figured to do uh, one Viper. That's what people really want. Just one Viper. And it's over. Okay. All right. Bye. And that would be the end of the line. But I do think that uh, anything Viper is an army builder. I see the temptation. It's low-hanging fruit in my eyes. But, I mean, you, Viper, 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 Serpent. Bat, 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 Viper, Viper. Okay, uh, we got more of the Ninja Forest line. So there's Bushido. And, uh, which one's that? The Night Creeper, I think. I think it is. Sorry, they don't have it. Yeah, Night Creeper. Nunchuck. Nunchuck came back. I don't hate on that Nunchuck at all, actually. I think that'd be a kind of a cool repaint for a Nunchuck if we ever needed to repaint a Nunchuck, which we really don't need to repaint a Nunchuck just yet, I don't think. Um... Yeah, this one was Slice. And I could put them in there twice. Snake Eyes. You guys know how I feel about any more Snake Eyes coming. It's not necessary. It's just probable. Uh, his name is Storm Shadow. Not necessary. Just probable. And then we get into the Star Brigade. Uh, right? Uh, so, it's like they saw the sign. They said, yeah, it's... Uh, it's going to happen. All these ridiculous lines aren't really something. Let's do more. So they did that guy. What was his name? Carcass. Cobra. Black Star. You notice I don't have any more photos of them. That should tell you everything the crow thinks of them. Cobra Commander. Oh, look. He's got a face in the final part. We did one with a face. Isn't that great? Cobra Commander. All right. Uh, countdown to destruction. Uh, Duke, yeah, version, I don't care, but you know what, that simplicity of the design, if you had to do one from this ridiculous endeavor, from the Star Command, whatever, do Duke, screw it, do Duke. Ah, uh, effects, this guy's name, effects, and I was like, what kind of effects are we looking for, and I realized it's his name, and then I was like, eh, don't care. Lobato Max. Go ahead, Hasbro. Go ahead. Go ahead. In your last final rattle, repeat this move. In 2032, when you end the classified line, that's just a made-up number, you go ahead, do this figure. It'll have the exact same effect it has. Why? Uh, ozone. Payload. Payload. Predacon. 
And you can see all these different kind of inspirations. Again, it's like a carryover, right? So I see a lot of, well, oh, let's do something that crosses over with the Predator series. Oh, okay, sure. Remember, Predator was also big in the comics in 94. Uh, Predators 2 didn't do too badly. Uh, so you have a uh, robot. What is this guy? Robo, oh, Roadblock. I'm sorry, I wanted to say Roboblock, but Roadblock, sure. Sci-fi, never more to, true to the name, so much so that I got to pass them by. Uh, space shot, yeah, looks more like an Arctic line shot in the dark. And then we got these special anniversary sets. Oh my God, guys, it was the 30th anniversary when these came out. So you had, uh, you had this one here. It came with an assembly of figures in the space shuttle. So the whole crew there. And then these. Hey, look at these. What are these? What are these ones? These are their 30th anniversary, I believe. Uh, figures for the line. Action Marine. Action Pilot. Action Sailor. Action Soldier. Well, geez, we're seeing one of those just now. These are the new images of the box for the uh, Action Soldier. So there you go. We've got the Action Soldier. So who else did we get? We got the Action Diver. Or Action Sailor, pardon me. I just don't have images because it didn't show up with the box images very clear. So I didn't put it in there right away. Uh, it might show up later in the slideshow. So what can we reasonably expect? As some others I've already speculated, I would expect the close out of the other two, the... Uh, the pilot and the marine but uh just while we're on the new box there's the new box for big boy you know i'm not a big fan of the figure but with the head sculpt put on the body uh i can see some conversion stuff i don't know i uh, no, i'm still not a big fan of it but uh you guys might like the box and you might be a fan of big boa so i thought i'd slip it in there while we were talking about stuff and of course the box new box art for moa uh mutton junkyard is nothing new but the box art for scrap iron came out and scrap or sorry metalhead metalhead did show up in the 94 line so we are talking about them so i thought i'd slide that in there and there's that Navy diver. Okay, vehicles that you could get in the uh, the the uh, Joe, Joe line for 94 mail away. You could get a variant of an APC vehicle, and it came with a new variant of Cutter. Uh, you could do a mail away order for Colonel Colton, uh, G.I. Joe himself. And I could see some interest in seeing that in the line. I just wouldn't anticipate when. Uh, and I wouldn't do it as my pick, for sure. Other vehicles we got, we got the Blockbuster, and that came with uh, wind chill again. So he survived his snow sled experience and got something with a bit more forward slope protection and a windscreen. Good for him. Probably has a heater down by his feet, too. Uh, and then we got the Scorpion out of that line as well. Another mud vehicle with a lot of pointy parts and guns and, and play factor for troop loadouts and shooty missiles. And then the air... Uh, saw a razor blade come in and, uh, yeah, there's potential on that as a sci-fi. reminds me a lot of the, uh, the earlier flyers than the later flyers. So sure. Uh, and then the manta ray, an assault style boat, like a lot, uh, uh, up armored assault naval landing boat, we'll call it with, uh, some weapon effects. And that was the vehicle line, I think. And then we got a couple of power fighters, which was playing with mechanized exoskeletons more than anything. Uh, you only got the two in the line, I think. So this one was with gears. And then the other one came with a Techno Viper variant, a gold and purple, it looks like. And uh, considering we already know we're getting two different variants of Techno Viper, I don't see any any push to do that. Ah, uh, so there's my number one pick for the Joe figure, guys. I am going to pick Shipwreck Navy Seal, and that was a tough call between himself and, uh, himself and, uh, Stalker, right? Uh, both were the more compelling figures of those line, of, of the 94 line, as far as what I could see Hasbro playing with for concepts and finding a role with them within the line to support their current troop disposition, if you would, for how they are laying out their lines. So I think it's clear that we have a shipwreck and we most of us pretty much like our shipwreck. I don't think this shipwreck would damage what you like about the shipwreck. I think it would augment what you like about your torpedo. And I think it would augment what you would like about your 60th anniversary 
uh, sailor if you are to pick up one or more of those. Um, so I definitely see the appeal in that because uh, you've seen these guys pop up before, guys. I'm just going to do this. Uh, not that he ever needs promoting, and I'm not promoting him. In fact, I'm not a big fan of him. But McFarland Toys, a long time ago, started a military line that is very much on scale with G.I. Joe Classified. And you've seen me pop these in the background. And these are very much what the 60th anniversary soldiers will bring to the table for the sorry the 60th anniversary divers will bring to the table for your collection when you look at uh putting them with torpedo or cobra eels or whatever naval stuff you have boarding crews things like that so that's kind of how i see where shipwreck might fit in and the role he would fill really is just that diver again um my top pick was let me just make sure i got that it's all those slides where i want so uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, my top pick for Cobra was really hard, guys. I didn't really see anything I could find and say that would be worth approaching. Maybe. Uh, the last, the only one I could really find where I was like, yeah, but I could see it working if you consider what else they're putting out in the line. It's that Night Creeper later, guys. Um, I, we do know a Night Creeper is coming out. Uh, we're pretty sure of it anyways, based off leaked images, announcements, sculpt chairs for the heads. Uh, so Night Creeper being another troop build kind of uh, ninja type character, stealthy, stocky, having that later. I could see the appeal of, of maybe that to a lot of other people. And uh, if you look at what they're going to do with Naga Hyde, how they've redeemed the appearance of a lot of characters that were always passable but not great and now they're great uh between the 80s and now uh i think yeah night creeper leader is somebody they could tackle so crow what are you gonna do about the vehicle uh yeah so i gotta go with something a little bit more obvious for me that is missing from the line and i think again it goes to what they're building up i say we do the manta ray and actually, I say we approach this vehicle uh, sooner than later. Maybe do a figure set with it. I don't know. But it, again, this goes into what is Hasbro putting on the market. And these 60th anniversary figures are essentially G.I. Joe's troop builders. So between Steel Corps divers and, and troop commandos, what we're getting is uh, air support, naval support, and more ground support, especially Desert Cad, which you've heard me talk about the Desert Commando, right? So for a, a boat like that, I definitely think I definitely see a place for the naval teams, and actually, even you could load up ground troops on it, and you could do little dioramas and photos of that. But I think it has a place in the collection. Of course, I would want it modernized and maybe give new considerations. But, uh, oh, that's not at all the show. I did have some pictures of why I pick it here. Uh, so you consider things like this. One, it's already in service and the design is already uh, very familiar enough. It does fit into that military feel as opposed to a sci-fi vehicle from the old 80s line. Uh, you could give it the upgrade ability for a lot of troop carry or playability with other features that are on boats. I use this Israel. I think it's Israeli. Uh, just as a joke. Oh, look, anti-tank missiles as well. But I mean, that thing's out there. But you can see the different kind of influences you could use with different types of patrol boats. I know that's not the same type of boat shell, but with the phalanx uh, miniguns and things like that, uh, and the sensory and and uh, communications equipment and the pilot station, you can see a lot of play factor involved in something like that. And I think it would fold in nicely with a shipwreck torpedo, eels, 60th anniversary sailor line. Um, but the bottom line is, guys, this was the end of Joe. Those were my picks. I'm uh, just going to talk about a couple things, really, as I show you. In the end, uh, Star Wars... Kind of won the war. You know, Joe won the first battle with them and stayed on the market past what they could really do more uh, with, with as far as characters and, and diversity. But in the end, it was that small cast, that two-hour movie, followed by another two-hour movie, followed by another two-hour movie, and the love of the fans star wars won the day and that's who kenner picked to elevate and in 94 
elevating Star Wars meant putting Joe aside. And like you saw, it would come back in certain collector reiterations like uh, Pursuit of Cobra, Rise of Cobra, other things like that. But it wasn't the same until Classified has come back. And Classified does, they, does it different. They take that whole line and they say, cool, look at all this source material. Let's put it out. Let's put it out, not just for, uh, in a linear sense, going from the first one to the last one. Let's grab figures out of certain lines that had appeal to that generation and let's do them right. So that was the purpose of this show. And like I said the other day, you know, I, I know I come off like this a lot of the time. But, you know, you guys, I'm, I, on this particular point that I'm ending the show with, I'm going to go off like this because I think this is fun. And it's just the point that we've all been trying to drive home on, on our, in our age group, right? So uh, I said I was done talking about QC and all that. And I am, right? Like, it is what it is. We all have, uh, I, I will say this, uh, the, the, the issues we have with QC in my generation are rooted in something very different. Uh, and I am so glad right now that... You know, you guys have the ability and the means to do a lot more about the things that are upsetting you about your collectibles and your toys than we did when we were uh, younger because the last slide show is just a, was showing you what we had to do. So it, just remember, it's uh, quality control issues are nothing new, but the reasons people are collecting and what the toy market is now is very new. Right, so it doesn't matter anymore if quality control issues have always existed, right? The market and the, the interest groups have changed drastically for the reasons of playing toys. When you were buying toys in the 70s and 80s, we weren't buying them to collect them, uh, to be collectors. We were buying them to play with them. Now, most people are buying them to collect them and display them. So quality control is a very different issue now, and I understand that. So. This is not a slight against that. I totally, I understand that issue. And I understand why people have those stances. So I wanted to show you what a quality control issue would look like back when I was a kid. Let's get rid of our cast. Goodbye, cast. I'm going to take you back to 1982 or three. All right. So 1982 or three. Ah, well, we'll say it's 1985. Let's make it 1985. By 1985, a lot of kids had a pile of action figures of a, a lot of different brands, and things were breaking as we played with them and things like that. But every now and then, you would get a figure right out of the box that already had a problem, and we didn't know about the words quality control issue. We knew about, we're fucked. And I pardon my language, it gets that way. This is definitely not one for kids. So let's pretend this is little old Ryan in 1985, let's say, right? And I'm writing a letter to the company. Because I got us. Darth Vader and his stupid little lightsaber thing was very bent. So, at that time, you had a mailing address provided to you for, uh, definitely for mail-in orders. But sometimes uh, you, were, you were lucky enough to find one that would get you with, with somebody in the mail room that would go to the production crew and, and talk about issues. Right? It would take you a long time to figure that out. You had no internet. You had to do a lot of digging to find that information. So uh, about a month after you got that action figure and you found out who you had to send it to, you go and write a letter. And it says, Dear Mr. Alfredo Kenner, because we all know who the, the people are. And it was Alfredo Kenner, right? Uh, care of Inspector, Line Inspector Number 13, Star Wars Line. Uh, dear Sir, the Darth Vader action figure I got from your company has a terrible bend in the lightsaber. Please do something more about this or all of your fans will turn against you. You just watch signed Ryan. That would be about what, what you'd expect me to write if we combine quality control issues and our attitudes. And if I had had that attitude, that's what I would have written. So that letter, I write it up. I, uh, I beg my mom for a few stamps. I take four attempts to get the envelope right. And I hand it off to Mr. Mailman, the manliest man who ever manned the mail. And he's going to, he's, he said, no problem, Ryan. Sorry about your Darth Vader. Let's see if we can't get that fixed with the trusty old mail system. So off he goes. Well, he's going to take that back to the mail room and get it all sorted out. And he's going to take that from Canada to the U.S. and straight to Kenner, 
right into their mail room and they're going to sort through that. And this has now been, wow, it's, you know, they told you it would be four to six weeks before you ever heard anything. And uh, so we're saying this is about five months in it that goes to the mail room now. And it's going right to Mr. Alfredo Kenner after about a month of sorting. So uh, Mr. Alfredo Kenner, he is going to basically laugh his ass off and then say, send you an envelope full of spit, a brand new lightsaber, but it is the lightsaber uh, for Obi-Wan and it too is bent. So you are now left like this. One day I will be older and have more money and I will be able to change the toy market, right? Isn't that how it all turned out? Pretty much right. So what I'm trying to get at, guys, is uh, you guys have it a lot better now. You can absolutely change the toy market in a way that we can't because uh, shareholders care a lot more about what you think now than what we were able to iterate to them back then. We didn't have the means to tell them what we really thought. Now you do. So as much debate as there is, whether you should be positive about a figure or negative about a figure, just remember there's always stuff you can do about it. And I'm big on that. In the Army, I was taught you never bring a problem without a solution in mind, right? Uh, so that's my driving home point. Uh, guys, I know I slam this ninja stuff a lot, and uh, I do know I have guys who are very into martial arts and whatnot, and I am not trying to kill Ninja Force by paying it no mind whatsoever. Uh, is there a place for ninjas in the G.I. Joe universe? Clearly, in the G.I. Joe universe there is. Is there one in the real universe for the, all this wacky martial arts uh, side groups, like these ats or debts to a infantry unit where they got nunchucks and stuff? Ah, it's a little over the top, but guys, it is rooted in some very familiar and real interest in martial arts and military application. And I'm just showing you, like, there are a lot of forces that do drive this stuff home with their troops. Even our friends in Korea, as ridiculous as we think they are, they believe heavily in some sort of martial discipline, okay? And discipline can sometimes have you doing incredibly or incredibly brave or incredibly stupid things all in the sake of uh in the sake of your your um your dedication to that discipline so do i see a spot for the gi joe ninjas and all that other stuff absolutely i do should they be so plentiful as having a force i don't think so but that's just my opinion really but i just wanted to clarify why I'm not really dwelling on the ninja stuff. It's uh, as ridiculous as they look to me. I do accept. Oh, sorry. I want to just get you guys back up here. As ridiculous as they look to me. You know what? Come on. Come with me. I love you guys. Come on with me. As ridiculous as they are, I do accept that they have a spot in the line, right? Uh, so guys like Storm Shadow or or Snake Eyes and all them. I, I Yeah. Why not have ninjas? Sure. I just don't need a flood of them before I get all my more, my more realistic military looking figures and your whatever kind of figures you want from your childhood memories. At least the first version of each of these first before we get into massive repaints and adventure. Hey guys, that's it for 94. I had a lot of fun doing that series. Uh, you know, uh, that's never the end for the crow. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do hot mic. I'm going to do toy reviews. I'm going to do spec fire again someday. I'm going to show you crap I'm working on. I'm going to talk your ear off. You just choose whether or not you want to give that time or not. So if you gave that time today, thanks again. Don't forget the like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget all that. Don't forget I don't actually care. But everybody seems to have to say it on their videos. And, you know, if I grow this nest, like I said, one day, I'll do giveaways like other guys are doing. Uh, but for now, I just really appreciate the time and having having uh, a great subject like G.I. Joe to keep going on about. We'll see you next time, guys.